This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I wanted to talk about an old rat who's been denouncing rat poison. Bitcoin is rat poison, as Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger have taught us over the years. Bitcoin is indeed rat poison to those cantillionaires who crawl out of the Wall Street sewers every morning to feed on the fiat money printers. And today we're going to revisit one of those sewer rats who recently hopped on his private rat jet to Davos. This is Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan, who gave an interview to CNBC, which I'll link to in the description notes below so you can read the whole thing. Jamie Dimon says he's done talking about Bitcoin. I don't care, he says, though he's been talking about Bitcoin every month for years and years and years. So it seems like he might be a little bit uh, obsessed with Bitcoin. Jamie Dimon has been suffering from what's called Freudian projection for many years. In other words, he projects his own very real transgressions on to Bitcoin. So for example, does Bitcoin enable money laundry? No, that's actually JP Morgan, which has paid $39 billion in fines, $39 billion in fines since 2000, which is larger than most market caps of publicly traded companies. Is Bitcoin a Ponzi scheme? No, that's Bernie Madoff, who was supported by JP Morgan. Does Bitcoin enable drug trafficking? No, that's JP Morgan with its cocaine busts. Does Bitcoin enable sex trafficking? No, that's actually JP Morgan, as we can see here. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Is Bitcoin bad for the environment, as Jamie Dimon claims? No, that's actually Jamie Dimon and the Cantillionaire's horde of private jets that descend on Davos every year. For those of you who aren't aware of the environmental arguments around Bitcoin and what they get wrong, I'll link to a couple links in the description notes below why Bitcoin mining is good for the environment, burning methane for Bitcoin, how Bitcoin mining can be used to remediate methane emissions from landfills, as well as oil and gas mining operations. I'll link to this interesting tweet about how Bitcoin mining is helping 1,600 families in the mountains of Malawi produce cheaper and more reliable energy. And this is all through a company called Gridless. So I'll link to those in the description notes below. In this interview on CNBC, Joe Kernan points out to Jamie Dimon that Bitcoin functions in many ways like digital gold. Jamie Dimon's response, I don't do gold. Well, he doesn't do gold perhaps, but his company has gotten a little trouble with their spoofing and their gold trading. Former JP Morgan precious metals traders sentenced to prison and a $920 million fine. In the same interview, Dimon also says, after criticizing Bitcoin, I defend your right to do Bitcoin. I don't want to tell you what to do, but this would seem to contradict comments that he's made elsewhere in which he said if he were the government, he'd try to shut down Bitcoin. Of course, you can't do that, but it doesn't mean that he wouldn't try. So is Jamie Dimon a liar? Is he out of touch? Is he stupid or malicious? Yes, he is. In the same CNBC interview, Dimon compares Bitcoin to a pet rock. Is Bitcoin like a pet rock? If it is, then inflation is actually much, much worse than I thought because one of these pet rocks is now going for just over $42,000 per rock. I also never realized that you could send a pet rock over digital communication channels to anyone in the world almost instantaneously in a completely sovereign and permissionless manner. So again, this is a special pet rock. I also never realized that pet rocks could help balance electrical grids and help to mitigate vet methane venting as those articles I linked to show. I also never realized that pet rocks could help to protect people around the world from inflation and fiat debasement by central bankers and other friends of Jamie Dimon. So this is one very special rock indeed. This makes a lot more sense, his comments, when you realize that Dimon is pushing corporate blockchains and other shipcoin garbage. A quote from this interview, blockchain is real, it's a technology, we use it, it's going to move money, it's going to move data, it's efficient. No, Jamie, blockchains are pretty useless unless you want something to be neutral and decentralized, in which case you just add proof of work and then you've just reinvented Bitcoin. But Jamie Dimon is not interested in decentralization. He only likes assets that he can control. He likes private blockchains that JP Morgan controls. And this is really a rather inefficient way of running a database if it's already going to be a centralized service. Another quote from the interview, there's a cryptocurrency which might actually do something. Dimon said of smart chain enriched blockchains. You can use it to buy and sell real estate and move data, tokenizing things that you do something with. And then there's one which does nothing, which of course is the pet rock Bitcoin. I would say to Diamond that tokenizing is just plain silly. You can tokenize ownership in the houses on my block, but there's no way to use a blockchain to enforce those token property rights in the real world. For that, you still need the judges and police. And Wall Street has been playing games with securitization, another name closely related to tokenization, 
Wall Street has been playing games with securitization. We saw what that did to mortgages and the housing crisis, but you don't need a blockchain to do that. You can just use a centralized database. So Diamond is really stuck at the lowest level of ship coinery in which he's saying blockchain, not Bitcoin. It shows how little he understands. Later in the interview, he said that we don't even know that Bitcoin is scarce because Satoshi, whoever that is, I'm not sure that who that is, Satoshi might come back someday and increase the Bitcoin supply. Great tweet here from Jameson Lopp. Jamie Dimon thinks Satoshi will come back one day and print more Bitcoin. How do you know it will stop at 21 million? He keeps asking year after year. Uh, Jameson Lopp goes on to say, bro, it's five lines of code and not even Satoshi can force us to change it. Here, here's the code related to the halvings. Since Jamie Dimon's morning routine is ready to wake up at 5 a.m. and read tons of stuff, I'd suggest he read a very short eight-page paper called the Bitcoin White Paper, and he might make less of a fool of himself on international TV if he understood the basics before opining on it. Now, Diamond clearly hates Bitcoin, but it is impossible, and this is interesting to recognize, it's impossible even for him to stop JP Morgan from getting involved in Bitcoin. It looks like JP Morgan Securities is actually an authorized participant for BlackRock's Bitcoin spot ETF. So you can't stop Bitcoin. All you can do is cut yourself off from Bitcoin's success, and you can't do anything to help a loser who's decided to keep his mind closed. Jamie Dimon says he doesn't care about Larry Fink changing his view on Bitcoin. J.B. Diamond really sounds like a little toddler having a tantrum, and it's pretty pathetic. I think the board at J.P. Morgan should fire Diamond and replace him with someone who actually understands Bitcoin and its importance to the financial system. So if you are a shareholder of J.P. Morgan, I would encourage you to write to the board and encourage them to oust this complete dinosaur. In the meantime, J.P. Morgan will continue to get left in the dust by companies like BlackRock that are fully embracing Bitcoin. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.